Hey, I'm Rob Jones, and in this movie, I'm going to give you a rundown of Native Instruments Machine as a follow-up to the review of iMachine, the iPhone app version of the software that I did last month. Obviously, Machine is a way more comprehensive tool, so I'll be taking you through some of the main operational features and things that I found most exciting about it. If you remember from last time, iMachine is a funky little app that allows you to program beats and instrumental parts, as well as recorded samples, in order to create pretty decent four-track grooves. I not only found it fun, but also saw the potential of it as a useful production tool for starting to work on tracks outside of the studio. Machine is the same basic concept of iMachine, with the front panel housing the 16 pads for bashing out parts. However, this device is actually a hardware-software combo, where the hardware is simply a control surface for the machine software, which can be run in standalone mode or as a plug-in within the DAW. Before I got Machine, I wasn't exactly sure what I'd be using it for. I thought it was just an MPC-style drum machine, which integrated with the DAW, to make it easier to construct good-sounding beats. But in actual fact, as I soon discovered, it's a lot more than that. Machine is capable of running up to eight groups, selected with the switches on the front panel. Each of these groups can be a drum kit, or any other collection of sampled or synthesized sounds. Then each of these groups can be programmed to play any number of different patterns, which you can see in the Step Sequencer section at the bottom. There are 16 slots here, and then another three banks of 16 once those are full, so it's unlikely you'll run out. Then the upper section allows you to create different scenes, which are various combinations of patterns that can be made to loop or play one after the other, so you can basically lay out an entire track here if you want to. As far as factory content goes, you've got heaps of options, with a 6 gigabyte library and the content from Complete provided too. The browser section is on the left side of the software window, and this allows you to choose whether you want to load an entire kit into a group, or an individual sound onto a pad within a group, and so on. And you have the usual attributes style navigation, as on other NI instruments. So I'm loading the Jazz Brush Kit into Group 1 which I can then play with the hardware pads. The pads have a really nice feel and response, and make it easy to create a dynamic and expressive performance. And the knobs on the hardware feel good too, so overall it's a great instrument to work with. Browsing can also be done from the hardware, by pressing the Browse switch, and then using the buttons and knobs above and below the LCD screens. So I'm loading a sampled bass instrument onto an individual pad in Group B now. Then if I want to play the sound on that pad, I can change the pads to keyboard mode, after which they become notes on a MIDI keyboard, so it can be used to play in a bass line. And that bass sound is on a single pad in just one of the groups, don't forget. So I could continue loading different sampled instruments onto each of the pads to create an entire jazz band in that group, which is exactly what I've done in the Machine Live demo movie that I've also made, which you can find on the Producer Tech YouTube channel. And you can even load any of your other synth or sampler plugins onto individual pads in a group. So you can see just how powerful an instrument this can be. As an alternative to playing in beats, you can also use the machine hardware like a step sequencer, where the pads suddenly become steps on a grid that can be turned on and off to make the drum sound on that position in the bar. You can see the current position is shown by a light chasing through the pads, so it's easier to program. Although virtually everything can be done from the hardware, there are some things that are of course only possible or faster in the software, like trimming the length of individual notes in a pattern, for example. However, I was surprised how many editing features were actually as quick, if not quicker, on the hardware, where you can do things like select a group of notes, then quantize them, then copy and paste them to other sections of a pattern, as well as even transpose them up and down.
So once you get to know the machine hardware, you'll find that by doing some things with the mouse and some with the controller, that you can achieve a really good balance and a super fast and efficient workflow that's more fun and hands-on than just doing everything with the mouse. Machine is also a fully-fledged sampler that allows you to record in samples using a mic or by recording audio from the DAW or machine itself, after which you can edit it in the software or hardware as you like, and then play or edit those samples in exactly the same way as any other sounds. One thing I really like here is the slice mode that allows you to split up a sample either by divisions of the bar or by its transients and then map them to each pad. So you can then resequence a drum loop or your own recordings by playing the pads. Every sound and group in Machine has a number of slots for adding effects, which can be any of those that come with Machine, which are all pretty decent, or another NI effect, or once again, any other external plugin effect you may have. So the effects options are pretty extensive. Plus you can even use any empty slots in a group to set up send effects, which basically become auxiliary channels that you can send sounds to for adding effects like chorus or reverb. Machine allows most sound or effects parameters to be automated, again, either from the hardware or the software. The automation curves show up as bars at the bottom of the pattern display, from where they can be edited with the mouse or on the controller as you prefer. So you can see with all these features that you've essentially got all the makings of a DAW within Machine, which is why it can be used to produce professional quality music in standalone mode. However, when you run it inside the DAW, the combined power of the two platforms opens up a whole new world of possibilities. Lastly, I wanted to mention how I found it going from iMachine to Machine. It's a very simple process that involves dragging the created export file out of iTunes. This is a zipped folder containing the project, a bounced audio file, and then any samples used. Then you simply open up the project in Machine. The project then has four groups in use and a single pattern, which you can then continue to develop using the full range of features this version of the software has to offer. So with iMachine as well, you really can start to work on music whenever you feel inspired, which can then become the basis for an actual track next time you're in the studio. So it's great for spontaneous creative urges. I found Machine to be very intuitive, where there were a fair few times when I thought, wouldn't it be great if you could do this? So I tried it, and that's the way it actually worked. So my experience has been extremely positive overall. I was more than a bit impressed with the way that it worked, just how much it offered, and how fun it was to use. So it's without a doubt going to become a key part of my studio from now on.